So I really do try my best to keep up with every comment and suggestion and video requests that you have on Instagram. And one of the most popular things that have been coming up for the past, I would even say two or three weeks has been cardiac. So that leads me to believe that probably a lot of you are in a cardiac class right now. Um, and the common themes that have come up were the confusion between left-sided heart failure and right-sided heart failure. So let's go through this quickly so we know the difference between the two and the symptoms that we can expect because that's really important when we talk about right-sided heart failure and we talk about left-sided heart failure. What we really wanna know is what is the problem that it's gonna create and what are the manifestations that we're gonna see. So before we talk about it, let's run through the heart for a second. So let's run through the blood flow of the heart. So we know that we start here from the in superior vena cava, I almost said inferior, superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium, right? And then from the right atrium, we're gonna pass through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And I'm making this blue because blue represents poorly oxygenated blood and this is poorly oxygenated blood on the right side. Now the right ventricle is gonna squeeze and then the blood is gonna shoot through the pulmonic valve, out through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. So let's draw a set of lungs. So here's one lung and here's two lungs, right? And once it's in the lungs, it's gonna pick up oxygen. So it's gonna to return to the heart through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium down through the mitral valve or bicuspid valve to the left ventricle. That left ventricle is gonna squeeze. We're gonna go through the aortic valve and out through the aorta to the body. So let's draw our body here. So here we are, here's our body. So this is important to understand the blood flow through the heart in order to talk about left-sided versus right-sided heart failure. So the terms that you're here, you're gonna hear left-sided heart failure, right-sided heart failure. The heart truly is not failing. Failing means you just didn't work at all, right? You, 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 nothing's happening. It's not that the heart is failing, it's just really not pumping effectively. That's what happens in left-sided and right-sided heart failure. So if we focus on the right side, and I'm gonna put an R here for the right so we can make symptoms about that, and then I'll put a left here for the left so we can make some symptoms about that. So just focused on the right side. If the right side of the heart is not pumping effectively, meaning that the ventricle is not squeezing effectively, then what's gonna happen? Well, think about the blood flow. So we know that the blood in the right ventricle is not going to get squeezed out into the pulmonary artery to the lungs. So we're gonna have a decreased amount of blood that's making it to the lungs and we're going to have a backup of blood through the right atrium. Because remember, the blood that's in the right atrium is gonna empty into the right ventricle. But if that right ventricle isn't squeezing effectively, then the blood's just gonna to start to back up. So we end up with backup, and I'm gonna make an arrow, backup of blood to the body, right, to body, because that's where it came from. It came from the body. So that's one thing. And we're gonna end up with a decreased amount of blood to the lungs because they can't squeeze hard enough to get that blood out to the lungs. And I have all this influx of blood coming to me from the atrium, but I can't squeeze to get it out. So now we're gonna to start to pump backwards. So. One of the things that we see a lot is JVD, jugular vein distension. You see this in right-sided heart failure because as the blood is backing up, it's backing up to the body. And you're going to see those veins bulging because you have an increase of blood that's backing up. As a result, you might even see some edema in this person, in this individual. Because again, if you just trace it backwards, all the blood is gonna to start to pull backwards and it's gonna accumulate in the body. Now, if we focus on the left side, and let's delete some of this, because it's starting to get a little bit busy. So let's delete our right side since we just talked about that. If we focus on the left side of the heart, remember the left side, so we're talking about here, that left ventricle, is the job is to squeeze the blood out through the aorta to the body. 
But again, if we're talking about heart failure, that this squeeze is not effective enough, then that means that I'm not going to have enough blood getting out to the body. So instead of it backing up to the body, I actually have a decreased amount of blood out to the body. So to the body. And this is oxygenated blood, guys. So this oxygenated blood, we need that for tissue function, for our own function. So this person's going to be tired, definitely fatigued. We might have decreased pulses decreased perfusion we're going to see in this individual. And just like we had on the right side, if I can't squeeze effectively to get this blood out, then all the blood that's coming from the left atrium pouring down to my left ventricle is going to start to back up. It's going to back up because there's nobody down here emptying, right? There's no one down here doing the job. And where is it going to back up to? Well, the lungs, right? Because that's where it came from. So if I have blood or fluid backing up to the lungs and what's gonna happen. If you listen to the lung sounds, you're gonna hear crackles because we know that's excess fluid. We have fluid overload because we're backing up. Dyspnea, this person's gonna have a hard time breathing because of all that backup that's happening. So now that you understand where the right side goes, where the left side goes, you know that if at any point in time these ventricles are not pumping effective enough what the manifestations are that you can expect to happen. So what would be our treatment? So let's write that here, treatment. What's our treatment of choice here? We wanna give the patient something to make the heart squeeze stronger because the problem is it's not squeezing strong enough. We call those drugs positive inotropes. And the big one we always talk about is digoxin. That's a positive inotrope. Now, digoxin works by making the heart squeeze stronger. But in order to squeeze stronger, the heart has to slow down. And that's why we always make a big deal about digoxin, that in an adult, the heart rate cannot be under 60 beats per minute. And we're talking about taking the apical pulse, right? So here, cannot be less than 60 beats per minute because in order for it to squeeze stronger, it's got to slow down a bit. Think about going to the gym and picking up 80 pound dumbbells and someone tells you, I need you to do 20 reps. If you try to lift those dumbbells as fast as you can, you're gonna fatigue very quickly. But if you slow down, you may be able to do a better job. You can be stronger at it and more effective. And that's the same idea as digoxin. So that's why that heart rate is really a big deal. Now, as you look at these symptoms, you should be thinking to yourself, you know, what do we do to alleviate these things? So at left-sided, where we have the fluid and the blood backing up into the lungs, we've got the crackles and dyspnea, we can end up, of course, with pulmonary edema, then think about giving a diuretic to help relieve all of that fluid accumulation that we have. And really, this list of manifestations is something to help jog your brain, so you can critically think a little bit about what to expect and what you can do to fix that. So I hope this video was helpful for you to clear up some of the basics of left-sided versus right-sided, and uh, hopefully now you won't forget it.